Praise God, I'm set here by Jesus. Preaching that men need to repent. Jesus wants you to be saved. Jesus hung on a cross for your sins. There's two things you must do. All right. You need to stop sinning, which is to repent. And you need to have faith in the Son of God. Stop sinning is imperative, but it's not enough. Judas repented himself. He gave back the 30 pieces, but he did not have faith. How do I know this? Because Judas killed himself. It is written, whatever is not of faith is sin. Killing is sin. So Judas did not have faith. See, that's how you can know today you do not have faith in the Son of God. Or are you still sinning? You might stop 50% of your sins. What if you go as far as 99%? But the last percentile includes killing. You're not saved. Faith purifies the whole heart. If the evil eye creates in you darkness in the whole body, cleansing out your own eye, having faith in the Son of God must purify all the body. First clean the inward, then the outward will be clean also. You blind guides, Jesus said this to religious leaders. He says to do the whole law. Imagine that, the Son of God teaches to keep every commandment. You did some things right, that's okay, but you've omitted the way to your matters of the law, faith, mercy, love, judgment. These ought you also to do. To do mercy means to speak mercy. To speak mercy, you must teach to confess and forsake sin. To have love, you must speak love and do love. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And do whatsoever I say. That's love. Do you love judgment? Jesus loves judgment. It's written in the prophet Isaiah. Jesus teaches it's a joy for the just to do judgment. Do you want a world of peace? That's coming with the Prince of Peace. Jesus is coming back. There will be peace here on earth. Part of that is the destruction of all sinners, as it is written in the prophet. That's the type of peace you must love. Do you love these things? Does your righteousness exceed that of the scribes and of the Pharisees? That's the only way it can, is if you're keeping love, judgment, mercy, faith. As I already expressed with Judas, he repented of something, but it wasn't enough. He didn't repent of suicidal thoughts. He ended up killing himself. Depression is a gateway sin to suicide. You have no reason to be depressed if you're made in God's image. You do have reason to feel guilty because you're sinning and you're made in God's image. Will you be reconciled back to God? I, as an ambassador of Christ, I speak this, be you reconciled to God. You can be justified by faith. It's something called the work of faith even. And as well, it is written, faith works by love. Well, if you're sinning against Jesus, your faith is obsolete. It's not working. 
Something that does not work cannot be of God. It is written, the just shall live by his faith. If you're spiritually dead, it is written, she that lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. You're not living by faith. Faith is powerful. Faith includes no sin. That's the real faith. For Jesus, he knows faith of the church sinners. He even says this. But he has something against you. In one case, a church, it was a backslidden church. I have this against you. You have left your first love. See, three things remain, faith, hope, charity, and the greatest of these three is charity. If you leave love, you leave it all. You don't have anything faithful in your life if you're in sin. You cannot go by what it says in the book of Galatians. Faith must have something to work with. See, there's the obedience of the faith. You must be obedient to God, the Father even. And it starts with kissing the Son lest He be angry. Jesus receives no kiss from those that don't have faith. Your faith has saved you, he says. And Jesus, he does not hear sinners. For why would God receive glory from someone that does not glorify him, but in a pretense? For why do you call Jesus Lord, Lord, and don't do the things which he says? This is a problem throughout this country. People say of Jesus, he's Lord, but they don't listen to him. It just doesn't make sense. Think about it on a common sense level. Why would you call someone Master and Lord and then not listen to them? You're an example of your own unbelief. If you believe Google Maps will get you to Trader Joe's today from Bremerton. You follow the directions. If you do not think it works or you do not want to listen to it, you're not going to start it. Unless if you want to start it by a pretense. And for this, God is angry. He does not receive any worship from you while in sin. And it's good to be honest. For the blind man that was healed in John 8 says, We know that God does not hear sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and does his will, him he heareth. This is true. See, it says in the book of Psalms, if you set your conversation in a worldly way, upright, orderly, then will God show the salvation of God. Well, that's a good saying. It makes sense. He that offers praise glorifies the Father and the Son. For such that do not this are Jehovah's Witness, Mormon. Those that deny the fullness of the Godhead that was in Christ bodily. Why? Because he is God. He cannot stop being who he is. For it is written in the prophet, Thus saith the Lord, King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, I am the last, besides me there is no God. Jesus Christ, when seen by the disciple of Nathaniel, he of Nathaniel is called, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. He spoke well. And he saw many more things thereafter. Nathaniel backslid, it is written, smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. They backslid, they left Jesus. Eleven of them came back. Jesus, out of love, he rebuked them for their hardness of heart and unbelief. See, even apostles 
turn to unbelief. And how is it that you can avoid the lake of fire as a backslider? It's impossible. For the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and many more sins, all liars, that includes all sinners. There is the sin of lying, yes. And then there's the sin of saying you're saved as a sinner. For if you say you know him and you don't keep his commandments, you're a liar. And the truth is not in you. So if all liars are going to the lake of fire, that covers all sinners who say they're saved. It's a strong message, yes, but I care about you to tell you that part of the gospel is the judgment, as it is written in Romans 2.16, and as well, fearing God, as it is written in Revelation 14. God does not leave himself without witness. In fact, even when the church goes out into the wilderness after the abomination of desolation, even God himself will send an angel to preach the everlasting gospel. For every creature must hear this gospel, the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus Christ is God Almighty and he's not his own father. If you believe oneness, modalism, you must repent. I must preach against all sin. As an ambassador, if you cannot have faith in sin, and I preach reconciliation with God, I must preach that you stop sinning. All sin. I care about you. I want you to be saved. Jesus is the quickening spirit from heaven. So the Father quickens whom he will, as does the Son of God. He will quicken whom he will. Jesus Christ, in him is life and light. In Jesus is no darkness at all, no sin. That's why it's written in James, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive you with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. A prerequisite to receiving the engrafted word is to lay apart all sin. It makes sense. Then you can judge your brother for his good. If you have a cleansed eye and someone comes in, they said, my eyelash got into my eye. What's more loving to say, let me help you? That's an eyelash. How about sin? You know what I mean? It's just always common sense with God. God is faithful. Where a tree falleth, there it shall be. I know it sounds simple. But why is it that the simple, the natural man, the man not in touch with the spirit, why is that they rest scripture? Because they love sin. And church sinners, they know they don't want to go to hell. So they come up with dualism. And they come up with lip service. It cannot be so. Now as well out here today, I know there might be Unitarian Universalists, Atheists, Buddhists. And I challenge you, what message gives the perfection of morality? What message out there and what book tells you to look into the perfect law of liberty. The message about not sinning. Now I understand most Christians teach for sin. That's a good reason not to go to their churches. Their meetings, as Paul tells us, are fellowships of demons. And that's true. The demons want their worship. The worship that is given to God through the Son of God is pure. And Jesus gives wisdom. Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God, the power of God. And the wisdom that comes from God is first pure. 
It's easy to be entreated. I know this is fact. Because someone that actually cares about God will care about your soul. But that doesn't necessarily mean what they're going to do is to tickle your ear, scratch your itch. It might be some things that are hard for you to hear. But will you hear them? Jesus, he came on the scene in the flesh. Speaking things that the prophets taught, for it was he himself in the prophet. And then he comes and teaches that if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. That's hard to hear. However, you don't actually literally have to even cut your hand off. But you must stop using it for sin. For it's better to go into life with one hand then two hands into hell fire. He meant it. Will you receive it? It's a free gift. I have received it freely myself, so I'm giving freely. Your soul is precious to me. It matters. For we all come from one blood. We're all creating God's image. Racists are going to go to hell. You know how people are with politics. They're idolaters. They're going to be bitter and hateful over voting for rich men in suits who are corrupt. Those people do not love God. So the question is, though, Will you love your neighbor as yourself? Will you do unto others as you have one done to yourself? If someone cusses at you or steals from you, it's sin. But why do you cuss at someone else? It doesn't work, and it does not work with God. For the test of the golden rule is there. Now, we've failed it in our past, the saints. We repent. We have repented. And that's why faith purifies the heart. We don't keep doing it, or else we have nothing to say. We have nothing to preach. And we're going to continue in our sins. That's why the Apostle Paul teaches to mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness. These are two of them. Also, putting away from you malice, lies, blasphemy, wrath. We need to speak truth everyone with another. The truth of God is so that Jesus Christ is the judge of quick and dead. And there's going to be closure on this time. When Jesus returns, everlasting righteousness starts. That means the God of this world, his time as God of this world is done. Satan is not God. Satan does want to be looked at as God, though. Satan was perfect. He was in heaven. He knows about these things. Satan's crafty. Satan knows that the Bible teaches if you commit sin, you're of the devil. Satan wants to lie to you. I was talking to someone in Costco. He liked my shirt. And then he liked other things about what I said. However, he said we're all sinners. The one thing he liked that I said was, I said, that's a lie the church is saying. And he said, I like that. You just came out with it. I'm paraphrasing him. But he enjoyed that. He has a sense of sincerity. We all know that the Son of God teaches sin no more. 
We all know that the Apostle Paul teaches that Jesus redeems the people of all iniquity. Sure, they'll call his name Jesus, but a lot of his followers are not saved from their sins. They're still in their sins. And this is a cruel disease in the churches. That somehow they got love mixed up with sinning. You only can love the sinner by telling them to stop. I mean, there's practical things you can do, like the Good Samaritan, and that's good, of course. You can give bread to your enemies, that's good. And heap coals of fire on their heads, but they take away the heaping of the coals. Because a lot of times they'll tell them they're saved. If they're called your enemy, that's because they're enemy of your God. Therefore, they cannot be saved. So be honest with them, tell them. But yes, if your enemy be hunger, give him food to eat, give him bread. This is good in the sight of God. Bless God. Become all things to all men, that you might save some. If you have a weak brother, gain him. Become weak yourself in humility. So fulfill the law of Christ. I care about you. Bear you another's burdens. See, the Pharisees, they put on these grievous burdens, however it's exactly written in the Gospel of Matthew, heavy burdens. Okay, but will you lift a finger? You can say something right, and that's good. Are you there, actually, to offer the physician, the one that heals of these things, Jesus? If you're whole, if your faith has saved you, you cannot still be sick. So there is no idea in the scriptures that you can be demon-possessed in the head, in the spirit, and be saved. That's a lie. They teach that because they know that their brothers are sinning, so they can give them a half message get them saved on paper while they're still sinning. And then blame the demons and then try to cast the demons out. They're invoking more spirits onto themselves. And that's great heresy before God. Jesus teaches that an unclean spirit after it leaves a man, comes back with seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and he finds the place he was swept, garnished, empty. That's what salvation looks like. But that's true deliverance. That's the blood of Jesus. But witches and warlocks, they're imparting spirits onto you. Now you can only receive these by choice. For it is written, an evil man seeks only rebellion, and a cruel messenger is sent against him. If you're not seeking rebellion against God, you're safe. The Holy Ghost protects. The enemy cannot touch you if you're in the spirit. Now, you might have a physical infirmity, but that's different. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus died for his friends and his enemies. Have a good day, man. Jesus is the suffering servant of Isaiah. Jesus Christ and the testimony thereof is the spirit of prophecy. Jesus is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. That's the blood, that's the book you need to be written in. 
And don't let the church sinners fool you. You can be blotted out of this book. It's written in the Torah. Whosoever sins against me, him will I blot out of my book. No man's going to do that. Jesus himself will blot you out. Jesus is fair about it. Jesus warns, if you go backsliding, you'll be filled with your own ways. You can't be filled with your own ways in sin and also be filled with the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the offspring of David. Yes, it is true. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is also the Son of David. Jesus Christ is fully God, fully man. I know this is true. The Father of Jesus is not fully man. For God is a spirit. And if you want to worship the Father of Jesus, you must do so in spirit and in truth. If you teach oneness or Mormonism, polytheism is heresy. The Father of Jesus was never a man like us. Jesus is the light that so shines in the darkness. Jesus will not acquit the guilty. He will not justify the wicked. Jesus, in a courtroom setting, if you're repentant, he'll justify you there. But in your actions, if you want to be separate from his lordship, in your deeds and in your practices, as a guarantee, he won't forgive you until you stop sinning. I can tell you this because of what the Bible teaches. It is written that he justifies the righteous. Very few will even touch that verse because they know what it says. Also, I like to preach that Jesus has the fullness of equity. And his judgment is righteous. That is written by the Apostle Paul. For it's not the hearers of the law that are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. You have to do it. Okay, you're saying to yourselves, I haven't done it, even up to the minute. I'm still sinning in my mind as I walk into the store. Okay, this is the blood. You need to get washed by the blood. See, people have a hard time believing that the thief on the cross repented of all sin. I can prove it with the Proverbs. It is written, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. That thief, judicially, he was guilty. Okay, I see that, of course. He even admits, we're getting what we deserve. But for the simple fact that the Son of God heard him, and was nigh unto him. We know that he changed his ways in his mind. He stopped all his sins. If you go by the parallel accounts, he was reviling the Son of God not too long before that. But he came under the fear of God. For this is the beginning of knowledge. To fear God. This is a great thing. And to have the Holy Ghost open up all sin to you. And that's what the Holy Ghost does. It's written in Jeremiah 31, Turn me. Turn me from this. 
Well, trust me, if you get turned by God, you're turning from all sin. Bless God. And now you can have the faith that Judas did not have. Judas once had it. He cast out devils by the Holy Ghost. And that work in the Spirit was given unto Judas and the doctrine of the apostles is to have that, you must obey God. Judas was obedient to God. Then he was not. And Judas, it would have been better for him not to have been born. If Judas had an untimely birth, it would have been better for all babies go to heaven. God has made man upright. But Judas and his inventions is what cost him his soul. It's written in Romans 1 that they are inventors of evil things. You can stop doing that. God cannot create sin. So that means it comes from an outside source. It's in the thoughts of man. In many ways, it carries out into your deeds that can be seen. Sometimes you might keep them secret. For example, lusting. You might carry it out by flirting, but once it starts in the heart, and you're trying to figure out what to say and all these things, when you try to flirt with one of your coworkers, you've already committed damnable sin. It's not of God. It's not of the law of Christ. And Jesus died a horrible death for this. So will you give it up? It's a choice. I encourage you to do so. I care about you to do so. To be saved. Hi. Seek peace and ensue it. The eyes of Jesus are over to the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. Jesus is against the one that does evil. That's true. The salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. You can be a right standing with God. Practically, He can open up His ears for you. And then you can be forgiven. You know, when you go into a courtroom, and you got to plead your case. Sometimes you got to admit what you did. Maybe you want a less punishment. You got to be sincere about it. If you walk into a courtroom and you tell the judge, I'm going to keep on doing this. Who are you? Fine, you're a good guy. You're going to spare me anyway. The judge is going to look at you like you're insane. And you think it's going to work with the Son of God? He's going to sit on the throne of David when he comes back. And right now, he's sitting next to his father. He's going to laugh at your calamity. Surely God scorns the scorners. So be a friend of God. Be saved. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily.